Welcome to Kawaii Stories for Gigi Kids. A place where kids like us will be inspired by awesome Christian stories. <laughs> Quick, grab it, it's running away. Oh no! Close the gate, girls, close the gate. It's too late, it's already out the gate. Oh, they run fast. Honey is always a cheeky girl. Hi, boys and girls, it's Esther here. Hi, it's Poppy. And I'm Auntie Nina. We're still at Auntie Nina's house. And Honey, the cheeky sheep, has run away. It's getting dark, girls. We have to be quick and bring her home. Oh, I'm scared for Honey. I hope she isn't hurt. Oh, I wish she had never run away. What, what do we do to bring her back? First, we have to be prepared. We need a blanket, a warm jacket, and a torch. Why a blanket? Because she might be hurt. Oh, I'm scared for Honey. Oh, me too. I'm a little bit nervous. Maybe I'll go to my glitter box. That always makes me feel better. Come on, boys and girls. In my glitter box today, I have an awesome 30-day devotional with Jesus. It is an awesome devotional that you can listen to any time, any place. At morning, at night, while you're colouring, it will be the awesome and best gift ever. And I actually think there's a special sheep story there. <laughs> but don't tell Esther I told you, she might share it with you later. All right, boys and girls, that's all from me. Bye! Come on, girls, work a little faster. Yes, we're coming. It's a little bit tiring going up the mountains. I'm not used to walking so much. I know, but we have to do it for honey. <gasps> you know what? What? This reminds me of a story in the Bible. Oh, yes. I remember that beautiful story. It's the one in our devotional. <gasps> That's it. <laughs> Why are you giggling, Poppy? Nothing. Do you want me to tell you the story? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes of All course. Right. Okay, brace yourself. This will make us walk faster. All right, here's a story. Day 16. Have you ever touched the fleece or the wool of a sheep? Isn't it so soft and fluffy? Today, I have a few interesting facts about sheep. Let's see if you already knew some of these. Number one, did you know that sheep are herbivores? That means that they only eat plants, vegetables and grass. Number two, did you know that there are over one billion sheep in the world? That is so many. That's more than 100, more than 300, that's more than 1,000, more than 10,000 and more than a million. Number three. Did you know that sheep have a vision of around 360 degrees? Do you know what that means? Well, it means that they can see behind them without turning their heads. Wow! Number four. Did you know that sheep have incredible memories? They can remember other sheep and their owner for many, many years. And to lucky last one, number five. Did you know that when sheep get sick, they go out to the field and find specific plants to help them get better? Way clever, isn't it? Today's story is about the lost sheep. You can find the story in your Bibles in Matthew 18, 10 to 14 and Luke 15, 3 to 7. The Lost Sheep Jesus leaned closer to hear the man with snow-colored hair and crinkled skin who had just asked him a question. Can you please repeat the question? Jesus asked him. Everyone around him were talking and it was hard for Jesus to hear those sitting close by. The corner of the man's eyes wrinkled and he gave Jesus a toothless grin. He nodded. Could you tell us a story? One of your parables? Jesus smiled and squeezed the old man's shoulder. Of course, he said, standing up and moving to a higher section of the rock. He wanted everyone to hear him. Jesus looked around. There were tax collectors, Pharisees, teachers of the law, shepherds, rich investors and more. His eyes rested on the shepherds in the crowd. 
They were hardworking men who spent day and night looking after their sheep. They gave their all for them. Jesus looked in the distance at the wide-spreading tablelands of the Jordan. Green thick grass decorated the ground and sheep happily feasted there. Jesus turned his head and saw the dark, narrow valley with steep, rocky walls near the mountains. It was that place where many of the sheep got lost and died. Jesus opened his mouth to speak and began telling the story of Levi the shepherd. Levi opened the gate and got ready to start counting his 100 sheep. His brother Caleb went back to the field to make sure that none were left behind. The soft light of his lamp twinkled in the distance as he moved about gently sending them to Levi. Levi smiled and looked down at his sheep. Okay, girls and boys, time for bed. Let's see who's here. Levi grabbed his staff, lifted it in his hand and started calling out the names one by one, pointing at each as they came through the gate. Good night, Wooly. Good night, Baba. Good night, Snowy. Good night, Butter, he began. The sheep answered the good nights too. Don't be cheeky, Fluffy and Smoky, he said as two of the younger sheep tried to hide behind the gate. Come on, quick, in you go. He gently patted their soft heads. Curly, move along, you're holding everyone behind. Curly, the biggest, wooliest and fluffy sheep, wobbled through the gate. He was too big and it took him a little longer to get through the gates. Levi laughed as Curly finally pushed through. In the distance, he heard a wolf howl. Then two, then three. The wolf sound hungry, Caleb shouted in the distance. Levi shuddered and looked at his precious sheep. No one would ever get near them, ever. He would protect them with his life if possible. The sound of Cuddles bleating brought his attention back to the sheep. What's wrong, Cuddles? He asked the little lamb that seemed to be crying as some of the bigger ones pushed past it. Levi lifted Cuddles in his arms and carried it safely to his mother. Other sheep tried to turn back to the field. Levi clicked his tongue and caught their attention. No running away, Cloud and Snowflake. Meet night, that includes you too, he said firmly as he ushered them back through the gate. There is danger out there and if you're not in here, you will be eaten by a wild beast. Wolves or a bear. Come on, come on, in you go. Levi and Caleb continue ushering sheep to safety. Levi lifted his finger again and counted. 99. He frowned and looked at his brother. I count at 99. Caleb shook his head. Nah, that's impossible. I ushered every single one your way. Caleb scanned the dark field. I counted 100. Anyway, who's missing? Levi scratched his head. Cinnamon, I'm going to count again. Caleb let out a frustrated breath. Levi, that will take hours. I need to get home to my family. Besides, he added, it's just one sheep, no big deal. Levi glared at his brother. You don't get it. That sheep is precious. For me, it's not just one. It's mine. Levi grabbed his staff and headed to count the sheep. Go home to your baby and wife, he said to his brother. It's getting late anyways. In the background, he heard Caleb begin to count the sheep. One, two, three, four, five. Levi smiled and thanked his brother. Finally, they looked at each other. There were only 99, and Cinnamon was definitely missing. Caleb, latch the gate well. I'm going to find him. Levi grabbed another lamp, wrapped a warm cloak around him, and took his staff. But Levi, it's dark and cold out there. And didn't you hear the wolves? Caleb said anxiously. Levi nodded. Yes, I know all that. But cinnamon is more important to me than I am. Go home, Caleb. I promise I will be safe. In the darkness of the night, Levi started his journey. He shook his head sadly. Cinnamon had always been adventurous. If only he knew the danger out there, Levi thought to himself. In the shadows, Levi could just make out the sharp edges of the rocks so tall and menacing, but breathtakingly beautiful in the daylight. As he climbed up the narrow dark pathway of the mountain, mysterious and frightening sounds echoed all around him. Suddenly in the distance, Levi heard a lion roar. The roar reverberated around him. 
He stopped moving and leaned against a rock, his heart thundering in his chest. It seemed that the wolves and lions were roaming the night. Taking a deep breath, Levi wrapped the cloak around him, tightened the grip on his lamp, and continued uphill. All of a sudden, a faint cry in the distance made him freeze. Did he just imagine the sound? He listened. There he was again. A tiny cry of a sheep. Cinnamon! Cinnamon! Levi shouted. Cinnamon, I'm coming! He lifted the lamp higher and looked in every shrub and hole he found on the way. He continued following the sound, climbing the steepest heights. He came to the edge of a cliff and shone his light. His precious cinnamon could be trapped there. The further he traveled, the closer the sound became. The sound was closer, but it was also really weak. Levi knew what that meant. His sheep was dying. No, 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 no. Don't give up, Cinnamon. I'm close. At this stage, Levi's legs ached from the climb. Sweat drenched his face and body, and his stomach growled in hunger. But he didn't care. He couldn't give up now. Suddenly, he heard it loud and clear. New energy surged through his body. Levi ran the rest of the way until he came to where the sound was coming from. He shone his light, and there, tangled in a thorn bush, was Cinnamon. Levi gasped and hurried to his side. Gently, he untangled him from the prickly bushes. Cinnamon was covered in scratches, and blood wet his fluffy wool. Tears streamed down Levi's cheeks as he rescued his little animal. Oh, Cinnamon, he whispered, picking him up gently and taking him in his arms. He watched as Cinnamon curled into his chest and closed his eyes. He was safe. Do you know what happened next? Let's look in our Bibles. Go to Luke 15, 5 to 7. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous person who do not need to repent. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving me the breath of life to live another day for you. Thank you that you care for us so much and rescue us from bad things and from sin. Thank you that you love me even when I don't do the right thing. Help me to always be covered in your light. Please help me shine out to others for your sake. Help me to be the child you want me to be. Also, please help me act the way that Jesus acted when he was here on earth. In your name, Amen. What a beautiful story, girls. I love it. Oh, me too. So cute. And all those names of the sheep. I like it. It made me a bit hungry thinking of all those names. Cinnamon, butter. <laughs> yes. Oh, you know what? I want to tell something to the boys and girls today. So, boys and girls, you can actually get your 30-day devotional, 30 Days with Jesus, is straight to your favorite app. You can listen to the story and learn about Jesus. And the best thing is that you can also request it at your local library and borrow it for free. Isn't that exciting? So make sure that you check the link below and you can buy your own copy, gift it to a friend, give it away to anybody that wants to or borrow it from your library because they are fantastic, fantastic stories. That sounds great. And by the way, hey, it's... Huh? Shh, listen. <gasps> there she is. Oh, honey! <laughs> Esta, give me the blanket, please. Honey will be scared. I have to pick her up very gently. You wait for me here, girls. I'm going down to get her. Be careful, Auntie Nina. I'll stay here. I won't move. Keep the torch still. <gasps> Yay! She got her! Honey's safe and Auntie Nina is safe. Ah, let's go back to the farm. Oh, look at Honey. I'm glad she's not hurt though. Me too. Okay, girls, let's go home. Oh, that reminds me. Before we go, we have a shout out. We want to say a big 
hello to Micah from Melbourne and also to Renee. They both sent us two beautiful pictures. Thank you, Micah, for your beautiful dinosaur picture. It was colourful and bright and we've put it on the blog. And Renee, we love your picture of Mary's big news. We're putting that on the blog too. Till next time, boys and girls. Bye. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. And don't forget that you are Gigi Kids, gorgeous in God's image.